fish. It's the number one seafood consumed in Singapore. And here at Jurong Fishery Port is where foreign fishing vessels land their catch. Let's see how heavy is one. We'll get a bunch of you two. Whoa, almost escaped. I've got you. Come on, guys. We're only at 4.7 kgs. 6.9. All right. 9.4. 11.7. The average Singaporean consumes about 16 kilograms of it a year. And how much is that? This much! But bad news for fish lovers. This year, the price of fresh fish went up on average by 20%. It's the highest year-on-year -year price increase in the past decade. In this episode of Talking Point, I want to find out what's causing the rise in fish prices and whether this fishy business will continue to get worse for our wallets. Only 10% of the fish you see here is supplied locally from marine fisheries or fish farms. The rest is imported from countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand and Malaysia. To get to the bottom of the rising costs, I'm heading across the causeway. My first stop, Johor. I'm visiting GM Seafood, one of the leading seafood wholesalers here. It's eight in the morning, and the trucks bringing in the catch are just arriving. Well, we have some red snapper here, some sea bass, some pomfret, some grouper as well. This is where some of the seafood that we have in Singapore comes from. Yeah. You guys were very efficient, so fast, got everything down, everything yes, yes. separated. It was all from the boat, from the jetty, and then we arrived here. Our cost increase uh, is around 25 to 30 percent. What kind of costs? A lot of costs. If you want to know more about this, okay. you follow me to the jetty, I will show you. This jetty in Andau is a major disembarkation point for fishermen in Johor. In 2021, 76% of Malaysia's fish supply were caught from the ocean. Yeah, okay, okay. Like, uncut, cut. Ah. So, Gary, these are all your boats? Yes, correct. How many boats do you have in total? 40 overs. After a busy week fishing out at sea, Captain Rossidi Yapa has just returned with his crew. Wow, that's a lot of sardines. Is this considered a good catch? I've been fishing for 20 years. Now, I like to catch fish. How about compared to before? Did you used to catch more or less fish? Dulu tiga hari kita masuk dua puluh tang, dua puluh lebih. Sekarang ni lima hari nari dapat ini. It was a clear day during our shoot. But Malaysia has been experiencing more frequent and intense storms over the past few years. The large storms bring stronger winds and waves, making it hard for these fishing boats to operate efficiently and reducing their ability to land as much fish. The fishermen are then forced to travel further, where the weather is clearer, for their catch. So your captain told me yeah. that they caught about 15 tons today, but this took six days. Usually it would take three days to get 20 tons. Yes. So this difference in how much time it takes, how does it affect you? The cost will be increased, definitely. For example, for the diesel, the diesel is now they already increased to four ringgit and 15 cents per litre. 
right now. Before that, it's only three something, three seventy something. Right? The Malaysian government gave out more than eight billion Singapore dollars on fuel subsidies this year, but only smaller fishing boats qualify. Larger ones like gherries, which bring in the majority of fish that are exported, do not benefit from it. With over 40 boats, Gary spends, on average, 320,000 Singapore dollars on diesel alone every week, about a 12% increase from a year ago. With fishermen now working for more days out at sea, Gary is also shelling out more for wages since they are paid for each day of work. Gary, on average, how much have your profits per boat changed? Oh yeah, nowadays I think the profits drop 30%. With profits taking a plunge, Gary has to charge 15% more for his fish. It's not just the frequency of storms that has made fishing tougher. Over the years, the weather patterns in Malaysia, including other regions that supply fish to Singapore, have become more extreme. And as I'm about to find out, the situation isn't going to get any better. I'm heading to Malaysia's meteorological department to find out if erratic weather patterns are something Malaysia's fishermen will have to accept for the long term. This is where To Ying Ying has spent the past five years monitoring weather patterns in the region. This is the radar images observed over our country. So you can see uh, the rain over our region. The red one is the heavy rain occurring over our region. We're seeing more and more thunderstorms that occur more frequently uh, currently. What's causing these changes? There are two factors, which is natural one and the anthropogenic one. So the natural uh, climate variability uh, is the climate phenomenon that occurring over the globe that also affecting our country. For example, like for this year, during the southwest monsoon, we generally will have a pattern where it is a drier weather. But for this year, we are not seeing that pattern. The weather is slightly wet compared to the previous year. So another one is anthropogenic climate change, which is driven by the global warming. So now we are seeing that for Malaysia, there's a steady rise of uh, temperature over our country. From 1981 to 2021, there's a 0.02 degrees Celsius increase every year. When the temperature is warmer, it's also holding more moisture, which is also causing more extreme and intense uh, thunderstorm and heavy rain occurring over our, our country. Global warming. It doesn't just affect us, but fish in our oceans too. Because higher temperatures increase the growth rate of marine bacteria, causing fish to die from diseases. Higher ocean temperatures could also kill plankton, a crucial food source for fish, contributing to a further dip in fish supply. Do you feel that in the long run, this is just going to keep getting worse? There is a high potential of the more frequent and more intense thunderstorm and heavy rain occurring over not only our country, but also around the world. If we can't control the weather, I wonder if the solution lies in farmed fish, where the environment is more controlled. In 2021, 24% of fish from Malaysia was produced in fish farms. Some of them, including sea bass, pomfret and grouper, are also exported to Singapore. I am right now in the state of Negeri Sembilan, in a town called Lukut, which is one of the largest aquaculture fish producing towns here. Technology has made it possible to breed marine fish in saltwater ponds. Everything here is controlled, from the temperature to the acidity and salinity of the water, ensuring a constant harvest of fish compared to the open oceans. 
This is one of the largest fish farms in the state. This place is huge. Hey, Raymond. And Raymond T is the man in charge. With no external factors to contend with, I assume fish farmers like him have an easier time. We raise uh, balamundi, sea bass, groupers, also we raise shrimp. So you export to Singapore all yes. of these fish? Yes, most of it we export to Singapore. And so, did you have to increase prices as well? Have to. The cost is very high now. You guess, what is my major cost? Well, from the looks of it, I think maybe the maintenance of the ponds, the labour perhaps? No. The major cost of farming actually is uh, feed. The food for the fish. 70% of the cost. Oh my god! Are prices of uh, feed going up as well? Recently, very bad. No. Let me show you what is the feed that we feed. This is the marine fish for thing. All right, let's begin. It's time for breakfast. Ah, uh, see, they come. They come, come on. They come. Yeah, fishy, 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 fishy. Come on. So, Raymond, how much can your cost come up to on average per day for fish feed? Like this pond, we have to feed a meal about a day, 400 kilos. So 400 kilos times uh, 1.5 US dollars, they make $600 a day. Per pond? Per pond. So 100 ponds is a lot. Fish feed is made of soybean, fish meal, vitamins and fish oil. But its main components are actually corn and wheat. And in the past year, Wheat prices have risen by 20%, while corn prices have gone up by 15% due to the prolonged Ukraine-Russian war, which has disrupted the worldwide supply of corn and wheat. How much of this increase in cost do you have to pass on to the consumer? I think minimum 15 to 20% minimum, because we have to cover back the cost. Expensive fish feed aside, Raymond also needs to keep the water clean so that it remains free from harmful bacteria that could kill his fish. So this is a very good enzyme, the probiotics. So the function of this is to go to digest all the slugs, the waste inside the pond. This probiotics, where do you get it from? We are imported from overseas, USA. Oh, so this is another cost for you? Yes, this is another cost, another big cost. And has the prices for these Probiotics also gone up? Increase. Because the exchange rate, also the raw material price, also the same, all increase. Around 20%. The Malaysian ringgit has continued to depreciate over the past two years. Coupled with the rise in price of raw materials like corn and wheat, and other fish farming products such as imported probiotics, Raymond's overall operating cost has been hard hit. Let me show you to in my factory how we process the fish. At this processing plant, tons of freshly caught seafood are cleaned before they're sent to markets and restaurants. OK, let's change your food. Raymond is putting me to work. We'll cut the fish. Cut the fish. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be cutting fish. Yes. All right. All right. How do I start? <laughs> this bit. So I put it here. Oh, okay. And then right, I will just hit it. All right. One, two, three. I think that went through. I think it did. Success! <laughs> You're laughing at me, right? You're laughing at me and you have all the right to laugh at me. I have never done this before. Brother, you can laugh at me, okay? Laugh all you want. So we're at the final stage. It's removing all these tiny, tiny little bones. And it's taken so long just to do this. It's so labor intensive. This is only one fish. Okay, Raymond, Whoa. don't look, don't look. 
So Raymond, how many people have you employed in this facility? Overall, we have uh, about 100. So two months before, we still have a little bit issue because the border just opened. At the time, we had to hire a lot of part-timers to help, because, and the cost is very high, you see. So before that, foreigners just couldn't come in? Yes. That was the difficulty? This is the difficulty. Now it's easier lah, because the border of uh, Nepal, the border of uh, Pakistan already open. They allow their people to come out to work. Post pandemic, Raymond has managed to recruit 30 foreign workers, but his overall wage cost has increased by six percent compared to two years ago. Wow, that was a long day, and this sort of work is by no means an easy feat. To be honest with you. I'm really beginning to feel for not just fishermen, but also these fish farmers because there are so many factors at play that are contributing to the rise in cost. And the problems within each of them are more complex than I imagined. After spending two days witnessing the challenges faced in catching and breeding fish, I want to know what's being done to help fishery owners, fishermen and breeders. And I'm about to find out one more reason that's affecting fresh fish prices. Their calculation shows that Malaysia lost about 4.2 to 6 billion ringgit per year. In May 2022, approximately 160 kilometers from Singapore, 20 undocumented foreigners on two fishing trawlers were detained for illegally trespassing into Malaysian waters off the coast of Johor. June 2022, 41 Vietnamese nationals were detained for illegally fishing in the waters of Sabah. That ship was carrying a catch worth more than 1.5 million ringgit. That's almost half a million Singapore dollars. Then two months later in August, Malaysian authorities detained a trawler with Thai fishermen, illegally fishing in the waters off Penang. The reports also claim that these illicit activities are causing a drop in the fish supply in Malaysian waters. Illegal fishing occurs when vessels from other countries enter Malaysian waters without permission to fish. Azril Nizam Omar runs a non-government organisation that works to improve the welfare of fishermen in Malaysia. Azril, so from my research, I found out that there were many foreign fishermen with big vessels illegally fishing in Malaysia. Has this been happening for a long time? It has been happening for quite uh, some time already. The calculation shows that Malaysia lost about 4.2 to 6 billion ringgit per year to the illegal fishing by foreign uh, fishermen. So why are these fishermen coming to Malaysian waters to fish? Why can't they just fish in their own countries? The reason is because in their waters, basically there is no more fish ready because of overfishing and because of their uh, fishing method, fishing gears they use, which is very harmful to fish population and also to the marine ecosystem. Basically, our fish biomass has been decreased more than 90% compared to what we have before. We are in very critical level. What's the impact that this illegal fishing has on the fish supply in Malaysian waters? If we're talking about the negative impact of the foreign fishing vessel, I think it is because of their fishing method. Okay? Um, we take uh, some Vietnamese boats as an uh, example. Um, they are using troll, but they are using two vessel troll. They drag the net using two boats. It can be more than one kilometer between the two boats. That's the size of the net used by this Vietnamese fishing vessel. It covered a very huge area and destroyed a lot of seabed and catch a lot of our fisheries resource. Not only do these illegal trawlers compete with local fishermen for catch, what's worse, many engage in illegal fishing methods 
using large-scale nets which have not been approved for use in Malaysia. That's because the large nets catch everything in their path, including juvenile fish, which haven't had the chance to mature and breed. Yet another reason why fish supplies are not being replenished in our oceans. Is there anything that the authorities are doing to keep these illegal vessels at bay? There's a lot of ops organized by Malaysian enforcement agencies, including Malaysian Navy. Malaysian government also increased the fine for illegal fishing to one million ringgit. While Malaysian authorities have stepped up enforcement, combating illegal unregulated fishing at sea is generally very complex. The huge area makes policing difficult, and it remains rampant because seafood is big business in Asia. So we may have to grapple with high prices for now. Prices for fresh fish are expected to continue increasing over the next few months. Because of the double whammy coming from the monsoon season, which will further shrink supply, and the upcoming holiday period, intensifying demand. So as much as I like my grouper and sea bass, I guess I can always consider buying other fish like threadfin, sea bream or mackerel, which has seen a much smaller price increase to satisfy my fish craving. <laughs>